What I can tell you, the Mexican politicians that are in power right now are aware of this. Those countries who adopt Bitcoin and embrace Bitcoin, also Bitcoin companies, will long term be better off. For Mexico, this is still going to be another cycle for that to be to the level that it is in the U.S. Uh, here today. Mm -hmm. Same thing happens with companies, right? If MicroStrategy mm -hmm. adopts it, he knows other yeah. CEOs, then all of a sudden there are like 50 companies, 100 companies. That game theory is playing out. If Germany moves or like America moves, then yeah, Mexico also moves, Austria also moves, when Austria also moves, maybe Italy looks at it. There's mm -hmm. those ripple effects of the game theory. Uh, I want to talk with you about Bitcoin culture. Uh, you even gave a talk that I saw uh, about how we can onboard people with uh, culture to Bitcoin, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. fascinating. Uh, so first thing, what is amazing or why is the Bitcoin culture itself really cool? We're starting hot. <laughs> so I was, uh, I do have to give you a little bit of background of where I was born uh, and why the importance of, of culture. So I was born and raised in uh, Mexico, born in Guadalajara, the state of Jalisco, but grew up in Mexico City. And I, I understand that most cultures have an attachment to, to their, you know, traditions and whatnot but man I, I think few cultures identify as strongly to their connection of what they do on a daily basis than uh, than mexico so there's this thesis of uh, i mean and I'm, I'm gonna connect it to uh, to bitcoin at, at the very end but there are things that are just part of daily life in in mexican culture whether it's the cuisine right the food uh, certain types of music, which you can include mariachis and rancheras and, you know, that kind of stuff that you probably see on, on movies and, and television. And then there's games that have been played for really, if we dig, if we dig into history for centuries, one of these games is uh, Loteria. And uh, as a Bitcoiner, now that I've studied also the history of where this game comes from, I've seen it since I was a little kid and I continue to see it. I think there's an opportunity for, for an entire country to adopt and get into Bitcoin by combining the two. So that's, uh, you know, and, and we can take it from there. But, but yeah, I mean, growing up again in, uh, in a country where culture is everywhere, there are options that have not been explored when it comes to the history of, of why it's so important to, 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 to dive into, uh, into Bitcoin and, uh, and culture in this case, which uh, this is a Loteria game that I uh, that I will get into. What is the what is the lottery? What, what is that? Yeah. So, are you familiar, Robin, with uh, with bingo? With, with bingo. Yeah. Yeah, like you have to uh, have like four in a row, and then you go bingo. Like I, I, I know it a little bit. I saw it in movies, but I never really played uh -huh. it. Like I, it, it, it feels like it's always portrayed as an uh, elderly sport. <laughs> in the in the US, that is the case. Yeah. So in the US, there's this game called bingo. As you mentioned, everybody that plays it has a board or a table with multiple numbers, and there's rows and columns, and and there's a guy in the front that spins a wheel, a number pops, and then if you have that number, then you match it, and then people stamp it. So th that's the, the American uh, version of, of, of bingo, right? Now, go down south to Mexico and the rest of Latin America. There is a version of that, but instead of using numbers, we use images, right? And these images throughout history have been changed by the church, by the military, by retail. This game is called Loteria, not Bingo. It dates all the way back to the 15th century, which started in Italy. The royals played it. It was supposed to be a really elite uh, game. Then from Italy, it transferred over to Spain, and the Spaniards played it 16th century, 17th century. Obviously, they conquer the, the I guess, the at the time, they called New Spain, which is now... Mexico and the rest of Latam. The reason why we speak Spanish is because of because of Spain, and they bring this game to this part of the world. for For another couple of centuries, it was still played by royalty and by the elites. Later on, the Catholic Church adopted it to teach some of the the locals what Christianity symbols represented, what it meant, and it was just an easy way. They they couldn't read. 
but they could they could show images, symbols, and traditions. Later on, this is now after Mexico becomes independent during the Revolutionary War, the military provides games to the soldiers. And this is the first time in history that it's being passed down from royalty to just the plebs, right? So here you go. There's the Revolutionary War. Every soldier gets a set, and that's the game they would play. So they would play during, you know, downtimes and whatnot. The game gets popularized so much that when the war is over, soldiers come back home, they bring the game, they show it to their families, and families fall in love with it. And for the next couple of decades, it keeps expanding. Then it gets adopted by different types of festivals, different types of parties. And now it's not just the royals and the plebs. It's everybody. Then in the 1950s, retail started adopting it to start selling products. So now we have, again, the royals then the church, military, and now retail. And one of the first companies that started doing this was, uh, I guess, the equivalent to um, what, what is this big brand in the U.S.? That's uh, McCormick, right? McCormick sells a bunch of mayonnaise and, and canned goods. So in Mexico, it was a, a French immigrant, uh, Clement St. Jacques, that sold canned goods, canned tomatoes, canned corn, canned beans, and, and so on and so on. And this is the first person that incorporated it with marketing and started selling it as a, hey, here's a game, here's a couple of images, you know, play and, and win different prices. This game has been so, so relevant throughout history up until today that in the last 10, 15 years, both Google and Apple have spent fortunes doing marketing research in Mexico and Latin, but specifically in Mexico. And their conclusion has been the same. They always arrive at, oh, let's, let's do a loteria. Uh, campaign. So back in 2019, Google had a big Loteria campaign. And this this year, 2024, Apple's biggest campaign in the country for their iPhone was based on Loteria. So I, I think my, my point here is this is a game that has been played for centuries. It has been adopted by all sorts of institutions, and it hasn't been given a Bitcoin treatment. So we believe that by doing that, we want to be the ones to do that. Obviously, the market will decide. but uh, we're incorporating a combination of memes, topics, uh, characters, the white paper, and so on and so on. And by, by I say when I say we, it's a you know a company that we're running that we'll, we'll get to. But anyways, there's there's this thesis of culture has to be mixed with Bitcoin instead of just trying to orange pill an entire country because it's freedom money. Can we learn something from the adoption of that game uh, that we might incorporate in uh, making Bitcoin uh, adopted? It feels like, yeah, there's like a bunch of people and then it was like a small circle and the small circle was so fascinated by it. Then they uh, explained it to their family, to their loved ones. It's kind of like grassroots mm -hmm. movement of Bitcoin. Can we learn mm -hmm. something fr from that history of game to Bitcoin? Our opinion is yes. Uh, and which, by the way, we just launched, I mean, we've been testing for a couple of months, uh, about eight months. But uh, but yeah, I mean, the, the biggest learning lesson here would be that instead of coming to your neighbor or to your cousin and trying to tell them, hey, read the Bitcoin standard right away is, Hey, um, let me tell you about Bitcoin. Oh, you know what? I, I know I read about it. It's too expensive. I cannot get into it. No, 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 no. Hold on. There's a way for you to get free Bitcoin or free sats. What is a sat? Oh, you don't know what that is. You know what? Just download this app. Um, it, you know, it's Loteria. Oh, Loteria. I know what that is. Okay, so just play it. And then, of course, the idea is for someone that has never touched Bitcoin to open the phone, download the app, get exposure to the game, recognize the type of imaging and the type of design that Loteria has, but with a Bitcoin twist. So maybe there's one card that gets drawn that is the Lightning Network. Oh, uh, you know, a Lightning Network. So if you have the card, you tap on it. And what we do, if it's a card that has been called and, and it was drawn, we give the user 100 sats per card that gets matched. Obviously, those cards can stack up based on rows, based on columns. The idea here is that Someone that has never been exposed to Bitcoin gets excited about getting free sats. But by this congratulatory, hey, you just earned your first Bitcoin. I mean, what, what do you mean? Well, I mean, it's a fraction of a Bitcoin. But if you want to keep stacking, just keep playing the game. As the price keeps going up, definitely interest goes up. And eventually, 
give the user the ability to say, okay, now that you see that your 100 sats is 10,000 sats, how would you like to really learn more about Bitcoin? Within our app, we have a, a feature that also explains the origins of money and the difference between crypto and Bitcoin and so on. So all of these concepts come in steps. It's not just all at once. But, but the biggest learning here is you already love a game. Why not start learning about Bitcoin by just getting free Bitcoin in the process? I love that gamifying aspect of it. I think gamifying education mm -hmm. is, uh, I like, it's often more, like it's often even simpler than educating people. Like we have to mm -hmm. get people familiar with the, with the words of Bitcoin and with the symbols of Bitcoin. I think mm -hmm. that's even like a very first and very nice step towards nobody. Not, not everyone will know about Austrian economics and will be really deep sure. in the Bitcoin. That will always be right. a small elite. So I think that like even a game that doesn't educate at all, but makes something with like a lightning network with Bitcoin, with Satoshi, just with the, with the words in there, I think that does already a, a lot in onboarding people. I love that a lot. Really cool what you're doing. That's cool, Robin. Thank you. Yeah, the market will decide, right? But but yeah, it's uh, you know, at the end of the day, we're we're not even a gaming company. That's uh, that's just an element that we strongly believe to be uh, powerful because culture. I mean, it, it it connects us, and it's not it's not a temporary phase, right? Culture will be here once we're gone so so we, we we hope that this can bring laughter and it can bring those concepts of of you know characters in the bitcoin space whether it's memes or some of the ogs and then also more complicated topics as we move along there's just for the record there's 54 cards in a bitcoin game and each player has access to a board that has 12 cards the nice thing about doing it this way is we can always rotate those cards Right now we have our, what we call the Genesis edition, but we can always rotate them into more advanced concepts or into even future collaborations with other Bitcoin companies. Really, really cool. Um, I'm also big on, on trying to get as many different views and perspectives uh, as possible on mm -hmm. Bitcoin and how they look at Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. So I'm really curious as you are brought up in, in Mexico and I think you still live in, in Mexico. I live in oh, Austin, yeah. but I go back and forth. Okay, okay. So, but you're still like really familiar mm -hmm. with with Mexico. Mm -hmm. um, how has the upbringing in Mexico, living in Mexico, influenced your understanding of Bitcoin that might be different to someone living in Europe, America, Canada, Africa, mm -hmm. whatever? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I like this question because this is one that could be considered. Uh, it's not controversial, but the reality is the the whole story we've we've been telling people about banking the unbanked that that's that's actually not quite true and this is this is something that even as a as an entrepreneur and as a bitcoiner i i'm guilty and my co-founder who is also mexican we've been guilty of of that narrative and, and that's just not true um the, the reality is mexico has a lot of limitations there's a lot of opportunity but one of those does not come in just banking the unbanked I know it was the case for El Salvador, where I believe that the percentage of people who didn't have access to a bank account and have never had one was over 70%. In Mexico, you can go to a local 7-Eleven, or it's called the OXO, and you can have access to a portion of the banking system by just exchanging cash. So so that, that story is is not quite true. Uh, the one thing that I can that I can share with you in terms of, of Mexico and, and mixing it with the adoption of Bitcoin, it's that it's very confusing. It's just very, very confusing. It's very frustrating. If you live in Mexico and you hear about Bitcoin and you want to get into it, there is a, an exchange that offers you that capability. But the problem is when you open that exchange, there's a hundred million options to buy things. Uh, as an investor that maybe hasn't taken the time to study what the differences are between tokens and NFTs and Bitcoin and everything else, it's just too much, man. And 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 people in the past that just like we have here, in, you know, in the U.S., people lose their money. I mean, there's even tokens where you know soccer is a big deal in uh, in Mexico, and there's apps where you open the you know the the exchange access, 
and you see maybe your favorite soccer team. So you think you're buying maybe stock of the company, but really it's a token that's attached to three other tokens. And when people find out their experience with Bitcoin just gets, has a really negative uh, connotation, which uh, which is something we're trying to change. But um, yeah, it, I would say it's a mix of confusion and frustration and, and the options you can do currently in, in Mexico. Wait, there's, there's no... Bitcoin only company in Mexico that offers a Bitcoin exchange on ramp. There's not no. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We, like Mexico, I don't know how many people live in Mexico. So there's 130 million people in Mexico and then there's an additional 30 million Mexicans living in the US. So if we take that as a unit, there's 160 million Mexicans. Oh man, that, that's that's crazy. I'll tell you something. Uh, <laughs> Mexico, let's say 130, 160 million people in Mexico mm -hmm. are Mexicans in, in the world. And then there is Austria with 8 million people. Mm -hmm. We have mm -hmm. two in Austria, from Austria, Bitcoin-only exchanges. That's, yeah. <laughs> and and yeah. they are completely purely Bitcoin-only, like Bitcoin they're doing only. nothing else. They are just like, they're educating people on self-custody. They're doing really good. They even operate Bitcoin ETMs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's always fascinating for me how um, how is it not possible? <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like, like there are Mexican Bitcoiners a lot, like for example, yourself, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, and, and Bitcoin exchanges, especially, I see it. They, they are running really good. They are uh, profitable businesses. It's, it's fascinating yeah. for me how this is not a thing in Mexico. Do, do you have access to Bitcoin only companies like Strike or something like that? There is access to those. Um, the only, I guess, at the current state of the, of the country, the access is still quite limited because Mexico, ironically, has one of the more strict laws when it comes to operating a, a financial institution or technology company. In fact, there's, a, there's this law called the FinTech law. And without that license, it's almost impossible to operate. I mean, it's almost impossible. The, the license itself has driven away many companies that, that I'm a big fan of, right? They have been inspirational to me, whether it's, you know, the rivers or the strikes or, you know, any other super Bitcoin maxis that have wanted to, to tap that, that market. Um, th this FinTech license has really pushed the way because of the difficulty, the time it takes, the regulatory, uh, and of course the, the expenses to get, to get that in motion. I, I mean, we are in process of getting that as well. Uh, so we, we know firsthand how, how difficult this is to, to obtain. So it's a uh, regulatory policy problem and not like, oh, nobody <laughs> wants to do it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I think it's a combination. It's a combination. But the, yeah, the regulatory is, is definitely, it's not friendly. It, it, it's not friendly. It's meant to, to be as impossible as, as it comes. Um, the ones that do achieve it, which we hope to be in that group, I mean, it's it's going to be special uh, when we do, hopefully in the next few months. And whoever comes after, it will be special. And I'm rooting for all of us that are Bitcoin-only companies to, to get that. Then the market can decide, you know, which one of us is offering better products or service or whatever. But but at the end of the day, the more Bitcoin-only companies that make it into 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 Mexico man the the better it would be for an entire nation it's interesting because you also move back and forth between austin uh, and mexico and mm -hmm. we have always this game theory thought in mind where those countries who adopt bitcoin and embrace bitcoin also bitcoin companies and those those mm -hmm. co uh, countries will long term be better off that's kind of the game theory aspect of like then forcing the countries that were opposed to Bitcoin, then all of a sudden wants to go into Bitcoin because they don't want to mm -hmm. miss out. Mm -hmm. um, can, can you talk about that game theory, maybe even like with, with uh, America now, if Trump is elected, if he really uh, goes ahead and is a pro-Bitcoin uh, president with AFK also with Ramaswamy and all, all, those, all mm -hmm. those people in there, um, that, that game theory playing out maybe directly with like America and Mexico on, on, a, mm -hmm. on, on a border edge. Like it's a really interesting, uh, thing case study. Yeah. That's super, super interesting because I've been, uh, you know, back and forth, but the last, 
core of the uh, you know 15 plus years i have spent the majority in the us and i don't remember having bitcoin as a piece of conversation during the last electoral process in in, in the us at all uh, you know to to be in this position where like you said you know vivek ramaswamy and, and and of course trump i mean he still he still needs work to get there you know <laughs> he still needs some work and and I know he's he's getting some hate on on Twitter because of the upcoming you know project. Of course, we hate it. Like as Bitcoiners, we hate it. Having said that, I I messed up as a Bitcoiner too in the past where I did lose money trying to be cute and trying to make a quick buck on on some other altcoins. If you know if it's not allowed to to cuss on here. So I mean I, I understand I I understand I'm not saying it's it's okay because obviously those types of people have such a big platform that the communication that they provide it could be you know it, it ruins other people's lives but the fact that it's even a topic it, it's it, it's just shocking man now for Mexico this is still gonna be another cycle for that to be to the level that it is in the U.S. Uh, here today what I can tell you without naming names is that the the current administration in Mexico who just switched but it's still part of the same political party it's not aloof and it's not uh ignorant of what's happening there just has to be strategy in the way it's communicated um i couldn't tell you a, a timeline of when those things will will maybe come to light but the mexican politicians that are in power right now are aware of this it's just not going to be a, a PR move because living so close, I mean, we're neighbors with the with, with the U.S., has a lot of pros and cons. Mexico could never pull a move like El Salvador, for example. I, I mean, it's, it's as of today or as of this year, Mexico became uh, the U.S.'s number one commercial partner, surpassing China. China has been the, the, one, the number one for, for the last 25 years. So because of that relationship, it's not something Mexico can just come out and say, you know what, screw you, USA, we're going to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender or something along the lines. But there's some good stuff. They're, they're not unaware of the importance of it. So in a way, because of the dependency, it's then also when the U.S. moves, likely that Mexico also moves on, on that front. You nailed it. You Yeah, you nailed it 100%. It's almost as if there still has to be the approval of, you know, the, the power above. I, I mean, I, and I would imagine that would be the case for a lot of countries, right? So so it is it is a good thing that, that it's being talked about right now, even with some confusing messages. Uh, it, it it is great having RFK on on that side too. Also not perfect, but getting through that process of of learning the difference between Bitcoin and crypto, I, I think it's really really positive, and I'm I'm super excited to see where this goes. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting ripple effect that uh, that can happen within countries because. Uh, I mean, the mm -hmm. same thing happens with, with companies, right? If MicroStrategy mm -hmm. adopts it, he knows other yeah. CEOs. Yeah. Uh, then all of a sudden, there are like 50 companies, 100 companies. Then maybe a big one moves. Uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe Michael Dell with Dell is moving soon with, with, with Bitcoin adoption. The that's same a rumor. Thing is, yeah, that's, that's a rumor. rumor right? yeah, that's a rumor, yeah. definitely. I like, yeah. I like that. But, but, but <laughs> yeah. I think it's such a rumor that we can say it's true we just don't know when it mm -hmm. will happen <laughs> yeah like yeah. i think it's pretty obvious that michael dell will do something with bitcoin <laughs> we, mm -hmm. we don't know what exactly he will do probably uh he has uh talks with michael Saylor. i imagine <laughs> probably he is aware of that us dollar is not the best vehicle to store value and probably he will buy some bitcoin at some point in time maybe hear it even on the next conference calls like when q4 is <laughs> free and yeah. i don't know yeah. no clue just speculation but the point is Com corporations do that but also countries i know for yeah. example in austria and germany we are both uh, german speaking uh austria is a very small country germany a little bit bigger but also not mm -hmm. that big mm -hmm. um we we copy a lot from each other there's like a, yeah. a lot of uh similarities between each other like from mm -hmm. taxes and and, and the regulatories so 
it's interesting when like, oh, if, if Germany moves or like America moves, then yeah, Mexico also moves, Austria also moves, when Austria also moves, maybe Italy looks at it. Like there, there's mm -hmm. those ripple effects of the game theory. And I, I, I really like to, I really like to see those, those, those kind of things playing out in the positive for Bitcoin. Yeah. No, no, you're right. That, that game theory is playing out. We just wish it was faster. Right. But, but I mean, it depends on how long, how long have you been in Bitcoin? altogether between you know even the altcoin seasons and all that stuff if you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis i guess you already bought some bitcoin and now the most important step is to keep the bitcoin keep them secure in a hardware wallet my personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the bitbox it's super secure it's simple to set up it's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a five percent discount with the code robin at the checkout visit bitbox.swiss slash robin to get your bitbox and the next step is to really level up your sovereignty as an individual you have to have the most secure self-custody setup you have to secure your own devices you have to protect your privacy you have to set up an inheritance plan and depending on where you live you even want to have a plan b a citizenship where you can move in case something goes really really wrong and through all those steps the bitcoin way is guiding you through step by step and if you visit the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you even get a 30 minute free call to find out how you can level up your sovereignty and last but not least i have something completely new for you guys i partnered up with coin vigilante this is the most beautiful bitcoin timepiece that i ever saw created by anyone look at that beauty i love it so much coin vigilante made an perfect bitcoin watch that's the perfect subtle elegant way to go out there and show that you are a bitcoiner and that watch brand is bitcoin only and coin vigilante just dropped a completely new and amazing genesis edition of their watch collections you have the date of the first ever mined bitcoin block in there and of course also the block height and which epoch we are currently in i love the level of detail they put in in this masterpiece and make sure to check out those amazing coin vigilante timepieces down in the descriptions i love those watches so so much i have been uh, invested in bitcoin since four years Okay. I, okay. I, I heard about Bitcoin seven years ago, but I never bought it since four years. I needed, <laughs> yeah. I needed, I needed three years to get from Bitcoin ah. as a scam to Bitcoin oh. might be something. Unfortunately, I know. it's so <laughs> tough, man. It's so tough. Yeah, we all have our journey. It's so tough. Do you see um, a difference also in the people that you meet in America and the people you meet in Mexico in the understanding and acceptance of Bitcoin? Or is that just on a regulatory state level, the, the differences and the people actually are kind of the same? No, that, that's actually, that's a great question because it, it, it is not the same. I mean, the, the needs that a Mexican has are very different from from an american you know person day to day and the same thing happens in el salvador so for example the idea of investing for the future here in in, in the us is i mean it's it's very strong right invest save it don't touch it and that'll be great because it's gonna go up that same story in most of latin america doesn't apply to the majority of the population because people really do live paycheck to paycheck so Instead of just, hey, save, and then one day it'll be a lot, I think it's more about the education of what money is. It's not just about save and become rich or save and, you know, it'll grow. It really starts with, hey, have you wondered why your tortilla or, you know, people buy tortillas all the time, like in, the, in a kilogram. Have you, have you noticed that it's gone up? Aren't you worried about this? Is, do you think that there's something that it should be done? I, I think it starts from those basics. Not, not really the idea of buy now and don't touch it and huddle for, for many, many years. For the majority of the population, there are some wealthy individuals, of course. But, but for the majority, it, it really has to start with, with, hey, this is messed up. How can you make your money 
spread out more than it did, you know, five years ago. Now, Mexico is it's an interesting example, though, because Mexico's economy has actually done better over the last six, seven years than most Latin American countries. The rate of inflation is lower in Mexico. The peso has appreciated more than other currencies. Uh, but at the same time, they're still experiencing that phenomenon of, of well, but what, you know, what, 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 what else can I do with my money, right? And, and I mean, for us, it's too obvious to think, well, it's just, just buy Bitcoin. But then you have that introduction of, oh, there's Bitcoin and there's a million tokens. That is where the confusion and the frustration that we're trying to, to clear or at least help people get educated on, on what those differences are. Absolutely. And really cool. And uh, you, you kind of touched on a little bit on what you're doing, but uh, what companies and what uh, other things are you working on in Bitcoin? Yeah, yeah. So um, just in, you mean in the space as far as the startup life of, yeah. So I'll, uh, yeah, I mean, maybe I'll take like a few minutes and kind of give you the super, the TLDR of, of my past life, but you're going to laugh, Robin, because it's this is pretty fiat. But my, my past three jobs before Bitcoin, my three three prior careers before Bitcoin were as fiat as they come. I mean, like super fiat. I worked for the banking industry. I worked for marketing analytics and social media listening, which is really a type of surveillance. And I also worked for the CSR ESG space. I mean, all of them, like all three of these are like the most scam fiat things that I mean, that I can think of today, right, as a, as a big corner. But at the time, you know, they were, uh, that, that was life. And, uh, you know, I did this from from uh, from the U.S. I was responsible for developing the go-to-market strategy for three different companies, going into LATAM, starting with Mexico, and then the, exp the expansion of these companies into the rest of LATAM, or at least, you know, 12 countries. So, you know, I did this three times. And by the fourth time I had an opportunity to go to another startup, I was already into Bitcoin. And, you know, you start thinking, I want to I want to do something in this space. I want to contribute. I just don't know what that something is. And fast forward, moved to Austin. I started connecting with I don't have you ever been to Austin, by the way? I unfortunately haven't been to America at all, uh, ah, but, but uh, yeah. my, my first small step will be in November in Great. adopting Bitcoin. That is not the States, but it's you like, El Salvador. I yeah. will go to El Salvador in adopting Bitcoin uh, in November. That's like the closest I have ever been to America. Great. And I have just been confirmed as a speaker for Bitcoin 2025 in Las That's Vegas. Great. Uh, so I will be in uh, Bitcoin uh, also in, in Las Vegas in America. Yeah, that will probably be my first ever trip to America. So your um, first trip to the US that. is going to be in Vegas. That's crazy. <laughs> that's cool, man. Oh, that's really cool. Yeah, Adopting Bitcoin is a great conference. I'm a huge fan uh, of, of what they're doing down there. Um, so, oh, that, that that's really cool. So I, I was going to mention about Austin. You, you have to make it down to Austin at some point. There's a lot of Bitcoiners uh, living there, building there, whether it's you know, exchanges or non-custodial account uh, uh, companies and reward companies. And then there's Pleb Lab and there's Unchain and ZapRite. There's a bunch of stuff happening. But anyways, I moved I moved to Austin. I start connecting with Bitcoiners. And, uh, you know, while being there, I expressed, yeah, I want to build something in Bitcoin. I just don't know what it is. Most likely it should be a Bitcoin only exchange for Mexico, but I don't even know where to start. And from from living there, People started connecting me to, you know, you need a co-founder, and uh, and then a, a friend that, uh, you, you know, Tony from Mutiny. Tony from from who? Mutiny, Mutiny Wallet. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so he, no, no worries. He's down there, and he, um, yeah, he basically tells me, hey, you know, if you want to build something, I think there's a guy you should give a call. He's also Mexican, um, and he has experience working with Bitcoin companies. You guys need to connect. Sounds like you have similar. Uh, ideas for goals so call them up uh we synced up and we thought okay i, I you know we're gonna build a, a bitcoin only exchange and you know it's really nice because at the time we thought oh this is the idea but then we find out there's so much more to do right which is why we started with the game as of right now we're not live for the buy and sell it has taken so long because of the reg regulatory aspect but um it's it's funny how 
co-founder, also Mexican, but we met because of Bitcoiners living in Austin. <laughs> I mean, that, that only happens in, in Bitcoin, right? Where Bitcoiners tell you, hey, you, you need to talk to this other person that's going to help you. And, uh, you know, fast forward uh, today, we uh, we're building what we call, you know, the, it, it gets confusing because it's not just an exchange. We're building a, a Bitcoin neobank. So what does that mean exactly? It means that once we have the license, our customers will be able to buy and sell Bitcoin. They'll be able to convert their Bitcoin into pesos and they'll be able to open checking accounts, saving accounts and have a debit card within the country. All of this cannot happen without the fintech license, which is why it's it's so important and so powerful to, to have that. Now, here's the one where I do get a little bit sometimes of a, of a I wouldn't call it hate, but it's it's a question that comes up. In in Mexico, most people with 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 money have been investing in uh, in Mexican treasury bonds. That that's what Mexicans do. And they haven't stopped and they're probably not going to stop right now because someone just told them that Bitcoin's going to 200,000. However, one of the things that has come up during months and months of research is if we provide the ability to do these types of investors to give them access to that from one app. So, you know, they go to Yopaki, they download the, you know, the application, they buy Bitcoin. And within a week, they notice that they made 10 percent on their investment. If they can use that 10% and invest it into Mexican T-bills, that's something that no one else is doing today. Now, on the flip side, if they also wanted to invest maybe 5% into a Mexican T-bill and then the 5% to buy some Tesla stock, they could do that from our app too. Today, it's very difficult for Mexican investors to have access to the U.S. stock market. And that's something we're providing them. Now, eventually, the goal is to slowly educate them, educate them into, okay, well, clearly your Bitcoin position is outpacing everything else. If you really think long-term, then it's time for you to allocate more into Bitcoin. But that's, that's going to take time. That's going to take time. Why are Mexicans so crazy about T-bills uh, in, in Mexico? Because the, the, the return investment has been on average 10 to 13% the last 10 years saying it's Quite uh, like, yeah uh, like in austria yeah. i know the 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 usual way of people investing the money is either etfs or mm -hmm. real estate so buying mm -hmm. their own home is usually how people save money mm -hmm. i completely disagree with that <laughs> but yeah. Pe yeah people use their own home as this savings account which i think is an horrible idea uh, yeah. but most mm -hmm. austrians do that because real estate has been giving amazing returns over the like the last 30 40 years interesting you know in mexico okay so let, let's talk about real estate too that's another big investment in mexico but most most wealthy families in mexico or high net worth individuals the majority of of, of, of this group already owns their home, like it's completely paid off, whether it came from inheritance or it was just a purchase as a gift from, from the parents, also, you know, from the same line of work. And we're talking, of course, wealthy, wealthy Mexicans. So the remaining, the remaining money they have is really to invest in other assets. And they're just not going to go all in into Bitcoin. That, that's going to take time. I mean, we, we hope to be the ones that can say, hey, If you want to buy Bitcoin, you get it from your pocket. Everything else, sure. Yeah, go out there and buy. If you, I mean, if you still want to gamble with tokens and NFTs, we don't think it's smart. But I mean, it's, it's free market. So do what you want. We're just not going to provide that. The the T-bills, that is something we would because you've been doing it for, for many years. So let's make it convenient for you and let us show you why it's best to invest in, in Bitcoin. And it's also a clever way to introduce um, Bitcoin and make it easier for people to switch because then it's uh, just a click and not like a new platform and stuff like that. So I, I think mm -hmm. it, it, it could be a very uh, good strategy and we, we kind of have to be like, I hate it when people um, shit on other people just because they, they do something for Bitcoin in a way they disagree with. Yeah, <laughs> so there, there's a lot, a lot of this. Uh, and I think everyone that is positively doing something and honestly mm -hmm. doing that for Bitcoin, that's a positive. Even if someone you would know, disagree yeah. with that, they should accept that they are doing something yeah. for Bitcoin and that's good for them also. You, you took the words out of my mouth because, you know, it's 
it's so different, man, being on, on Twitter just as a, as, you know, as someone that's posting all day because, because I've done it right before having a company. It's, it's, it's great because philosophically you really feel like you're in a different standard and you feel like everything else is just subpar, which is, you know, the reason why we wanted to build something. But once you start playing the game, man, I mean, it, it it's, we, we had no idea how difficult it would be to, to overcome some of the regulatory, uh, you know, difficulties and the KYC AML laws, uh, you know. So it's either it's either quit doing what we're doing or play the rules, some of them, and then eventually get to that, uh, you know, to that next phase. So I, I, I totally agree with you because I remember being a person that thought, ah, this is this is shit or this is crazy. And, and then you're on the other side and you're like, oh, man. I, I I just can't get past the certain step if I don't you know if I don't follow these rules. It's it's a tough game, man. I I I, I do feel I you know if someone tells me oh so you're doing KYC and my answer is yes and they tell me you know f off I I I hear you I I understand I understand. <laughs> it's uh it, it's funny because last year. Um, I was only on Twitter and didn't do the podcast. I mean, I started the podcast in December, but most of the year mm -hmm. I didn't do the podcast and I was just on Bitcoin Twitter and I was that one toxic Bitcoin maxi uh, <laughs> that, that you're right now talking about. Yeah. Um, yeah. but, uh, the, I have then in December started the podcast. Uh, so it has mm -hmm. been like 10, 11 months now that I have mm -hmm. the podcast I have done, uh, you're my 280th episode, actually. Uh, Dang so man. I have 280 people interviewed already in Bitcoin, uh, <laughs> builders in Bitcoin, people that, yeah. that do something, people that are connected somehow with Bitcoin and that have their own perspectives. And the funny thing that happened, my view on Bitcoin and the world economy is way <laughs> more realistic than it was <laughs> like 10 months ago. Um, and yeah. I, I'm way more, I'm way less aggressive and way more, um, I, I became more of a free market maximalist. I would say I'm way, way more of like, let's, let's, let's do, let's let co people cook and we will see what meal we were eating in whatever is the best thing. Like it's like a buffet. Everyone can cook. Mm. Uh, and I will try from everything a little I bit. Like that. The, the, yeah. the best thing I, I, like, yeah, I like, I will that. get for a second round or third round. Yeah, and yeah, yeah if, if you have, if you're building a neo bank that has T bills and stocks also on the app, and you're also onboarding like two million Mexicans every month to Bitcoin, like good, good for you, good for Bitcoin, and good for right. everyone. Like no, no, nobody is saying anything bad about that. I feel like. Let's go. Yeah, no, I, I like how you put it. I like the the buffet style. I, I like it. Yeah, man, it's it's just different when you when you do it on your own. And, you know, and some people, I, I know some uh, toxic maxis too, that have even defended certain points like you just did and say, you know what, if you don't like it, then go out and build something better. It, it's a free market. Go, go out there. Yes. Maybe criticize the project, but then go out there and execute it. It's, it's a, just, it's just a very different game, but uh, yeah, I like the buffet. I'm going to have to steal that Robin. <laughs> you, you you can go ahead and do that yeah, yeah. i also like that that's one thing i really uh let, let's get it out of the system what i <laughs> what, yeah, yeah. What, what i dislike sometimes about the community i think the true spirit of satoshi mm -hmm. is to give uh and don't expect to get credit or anything like that so that's mm -hmm. why the podcast i produce every day a, a one hour podcast i said to everyone and i also put in a youtube license take it whatever you want like if you want to yeah. take the clips or you want to take the whole thing just like take it republish it i don't care do it's whatever you want with it yeah. it's, it's an open source <laughs> podcast do whatever right. you want with it um so uh a lot of people don't get that and before mm -hmm. i was on the other side where i took clips from podcasts and really mm -hmm. like pot uh and other people were uh commenting on like oh you have to credit him i mean why like why do i have to do it and then i kind of yeah. stopped and and now i don't mm -hmm. repost anything i only produce original content because it was and then it just lives people. and it lives in youtube yeah yeah and just listen live. And, and i said like people just take my things it's the true spirit of satoshi satoshi is still till now still not known he just provided bitcoin okay. for the world and 
still didn't took any credit for it. And I think that's the true that's spirit crazy, uh, of doing something for the world without taking the credit for it. I, I, yeah. I, I just, I don't know why, but it came out right now. <laughs> yeah. No, that's good. It's uh, I like it. It's the spirit of open source. And uh, yeah, I mean, if there's something else out there, then just go out and do it. So this is your contribution. We're trying to put our contribution and, and so are so many other people, whether it's techs or podcasters or, you know, gaming companies, exchanges. It, it's a big effort. It's amazing, though, by the way, how, how far we've come. I mean, because sometimes, you know, cycles happen. And, you know, I did mess up. And uh, as I said, a lot of us Bitcoiners did touch the altcoins and, and not. And to just think back and say, man, it's it's been, it's been a while. That's why I was curious, you know, how long you've been. I guess a Bitcoin maxi or you know a full Bitcoiner, it, it, it's just crazy. Absolutely, yeah, and yeah, I've been, I, I'm definitely 100 in, uh, in in Bitcoin now. One question that I have uh, mm -hmm. before we come to the end routine of of the podcast is, as you are a business operator, you you have a lot of experience in Mexico and America. Mm -hmm. How do you think? Uh, Bitcoin will impact businesses overall, the business world, the investment world, the venture capital world, the, the building startup world. Yeah, well, I can tell you firsthand because we have gone through different phases. I think, uh, man, we, we can say so many, just, just the textbook Bitcoin things, right? But at the end of the day, just from my personal experience, building a Bitcoin only business is that I think it sets everything back into, into a place of, You got to be humble. You got to be open to learn new things. I've, I've always been intrigued by history because I have a dad who's a libertarian. So growing up, I was always exposed to all these theories. And I hated it, by the way. When I, when, I was, uh, when I was young, I hated it. I always thought my dad was crazy. He was a contrarian. But the older I get and the closer I get to Bitcoin, I, I see the benefits it brings into my life. And I say my friendships my my health uh my my curiosity about what really is is happening in the world not just what's textbook recommended because of a class so i think if we can apply those same concepts into into just real life it's gonna be it's gonna be a long time man but 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 when we see and you've talked to 286 people on the podcast before me when you see the passion that we put into this thing that is bitcoin It affects everything we do. So now translate that into the business world. And if businesses can be more careful and more humble into structuring, hiring, educating, instead of just, you know, there's a difference between delegating and then also coaching and teaching what, like, for example, a task is instead of just, oh, this is my day. Please go do this. There's a process of, hey, you know, we need to achieve X, Y, Z. Let me show you why. Now go execute it come back, I'll give you feedback. And then if you're still stuck, let's let's educate each other. I've been very fortunate to be around amazing Bitcoiners. I, I'm shocked we didn't know each other before, Robin. So I'm, I'm glad that now we've connected. But, uh, you know, at times, uh, or once upon a time, the, the first OG Bitcoiners that were very welcoming, that really inspired me to, you know, to really do something about Bitcoin or something in the space, were Max and Stacy. Like th those two, who have, I don't know how many millions of Bitcoiners they've created. I, I think it's, it's, we can apply that into how is it going to affect the future of businesses and the way they operate. I think it's in that just exploring that we can do so much more. I mean, and I know it's cheesy, but for me, it has affected me personally in every facet of my life. It has been, uh, has been that. Uh, I love it a lot. Really, really cool. And now let's come to the end routine. And I think the, the first question of the end routine uh, suits really nicely here. What can we learn from you besides Bitcoin? Mm, well, this is your typical, like what your hobbies and whatnot. <laughs> It's like that interview. Uh, you know, I, uh, I'm just really passionate, man. I, 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 love, I love life. You know, if it's, if it's not just Bitcoin, I, I, in general, I just love life. I'm completely dedicated to my family and my friends. So if, uh, I just I just have a deep connection with people. I know I kind of brought this at the beginning of the of the call or the the pod, where uh, where I mentioned culture is so important to you know to to Mexicans. But on a personal level, I I, I feel like uh, 
yeah, I'm, I'm someone that I, I enjoy connecting with, with people. And because of that, and the, and the culture, I love to cook. I, I love to cook. Uh, if, if, there's a, if there's a scenario in, in, in the Bitcoin life where I get to cook for Bitcoiners past our, uh, I guess, past this venture life, that, that'll be a, a dream come true. I, I, I really enjoy that. Building. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I know. I, I love it a lot. So uh, in opening a Mexican uh, Bitcoin <laughs> restaurant, yeah, uh, I yeah, would yeah. love it. Yeah. Um, perfect. Then let's come to our end end routine where the previous guest is asking a question for the next guest without knowing who the next guest uh, actually is. And the mm. question from the previous guest for you is, how would your life be different had you not discovered Bitcoin? Completely different. Completely different. Um, this is This is awesome question by the way i would probably be you know 25 35 pounds heavier um i wouldn't be building a company in in a really difficult space but at the same time getting the rewards of how amazing it is to connect with people um i would not be imagining the impossible T today i you know i i think any idea that that me and my co-founder have had we don't think it's impossible um And I would not be connecting with as cool as people as I am today. It, it would be very different. Up and down, man. Up and down. Uh, yeah. Forget about the libertarian aspect of it. I don't want to say, uh, I don't want to think this way, but maybe I would even be considering about uh, living in a gigantic, gigantic, because I live in Austin, which is a big city, but in a gigantic city where I cannot enjoy the outdoors and whatnot. It, it would be so different. It would, everything would be different. Will be spending tons of money on things I don't need. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you name it. I like the the view of that. Really cool, perfect. And thank you so much. Before I let you go, where can people find you and uh, reach out to you? So the two main places uh, for both myself and then our company on Twitter, I'm under Francisco BTC altogether. There's no dot in between. It's so F R A N C I S E O B T C, and then. Uh, If you want to follow our company, Yopaki, it's Y-O-P-A-K-I underscore. Really cool. Thank you so much for, for uh, mm -hmm. uh, taking your time, uh, Francisco. And also thank you so much for everyone that is joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye.